instructions on the portal just fine, and, and we're able to uh, download the, the first poem. Um, uh, Emily Dickinson uses, they're often numbered, but they're numbered all after her death. I think this one is 479, 479 here, but often referred to by the first line of the poem, so because I could not stop for death. Sorry it was a PDF document. Hopefully we were able to manage that. I know it's a little hard to take notes, but, but here we go. Um, so what we thought we'd do, we're going to start with just, just a dialogue about the poem. Uh, Dr. Chan and I are just going to refer to it, come back to it a couple times during the day, and, and just basically kind of model an engagement. It's not going to be in the form, obviously, of a, of a formal commentary, but more of an informal and engaged dialogue um, where we hope to, to touch on everything from some, some of the bigger themes. Yes. Emily Dickinson's, maybe it's relation to the rest of Emily Dickinson's work, maybe even her life, uh, and then get into some of the particulars of poetic technique. And I think we'd really like to, as we get into it, talk about some of the very particular effects of particular words, lines, choices that she made in this poem, and some things that really uh, struck us when we read it, and hopefully struck you. All right. So I guess one of the first things that strikes almost any reader of, of most of her poetry is maybe a little bit of the rhyme. It's a big one. I, I, we'll skip the dashes and a little bit of the punctuation first, but just the, the sound. Hopefully you're reading these things out loud, and I know that doesn't always take place um, at, at the top of your voices, but read it in some way where you, you can hear the words. I think that that can be possible doing it uh, silently to yourself, but you need to hear the language of poetry more than, uh, than anything else. And I think in this poem, there's an element of consistency to the rhyme. There's a somewhat sing-song quality that goes along with uh, at least the outward tone of the poem. And that is a, a somewhat pleasant, civil ride that she takes with death personified, carriage ride that she essentially takes to the grave. And on this ride goes by various stages of life, perhaps the various stages of her own life. But again, it's all partly because of, I think, the rhyme. It's all done in a very uh, pleasant, passive, somewhat playful way. Uh, but I think that there's uh, an obvious irony to that as well. Absolutely. That's probably the key to this poem, is to see, is to see that ironic contrast. And it is really in a subject matter that's treated as civil and kind and um, oh, very nice in his approach to it. And, and yet, obviously, there's something really awful about the fact that it's, it is death here that is a, that's coming and playing this role. Well, we commented earlier that the first two lines, because I could not step, stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. I was reading a critic earlier today who said that she wants death to come, that she's calmly waiting for death. This critic even suggested perhaps that she had a long illness, so she knew death was going to come, and then death comes along and takes her. And I, I think he's that's a quack. Yeah, he's, he's not right. <laughs> that because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. In other words, we're so wrapped up in our lives, we don't have time to stop for death or, or think about it or prepare for it. That, that, but don't worry, old death, he's going to come for you whether you whether you like it or not, whether you're stopped for him and waiting for him or not. So to me, she's clearly not stopped for him, that she's in the middle of her of her life. Um, yeah, it's probably even worse is that you can never avoid it. The carriage held but just ourselves in immortality. This is, in fact, to be alive is, is to be in the carriage riding toward your death. And, uh, and I think that, that other sad thing, too, of, of it's you and, and death and the eternal. It's, mm. it's not you and, and your friend, or you and anybody else. This is the, the lonely moment. <laughs> yes, from the beginning, yes, all the way through. Although I, I think we should also add that there is this tension that, that we said it's civil on the surface, it's ironic under there, but that civility does keep breaking through, so that there's an element of, or there's a certain attitude that the speaker has that perhaps ultimately it's all right. That this is a, a ride that we're all going to take and and that... Uh, yeah, I, well I think most of her poetry that you'll find, it's, she often 
in her best poetry often, this death is, is, is a kind of pervading theme, a, a recognition that death is always there. But Dickinson probably was aware of death almost as an affront to her, that she valued, she valued life. This isn't meant to be, a, it, it's, it's an ironic tone, but it's not meant to be a wallowing, sad piece. I think always there's something about the imagination and the power that one has that is what makes life so much more valuable than death. So it is always there, it holds you, but, but that's probably what enhances the power and the value of being alive, that in the meantime, what we have, uh, have an opportunity to do. So, and I think even that ride itself that she's taking, we slowly drove, he knew no haste. Uh, she's going back and, and getting to look on the pleasant moments of life, whether they're the school days with children playing in the, at recess or going past the fields of gazing grain, that there's an element of uh, pleasant retrospective mm. in the poem that is a, a celebration of life. It is. I, it seems to change about halfway through because it focuses on, on all of this, even though death stops. But then, as, he, as she talks about this movement of the carriage passing by life, or rather, it, it it's, then turns around the last three stanzas where it's in reverse. Uh, and it's actually death that, that passes us and, and drags something else. So it does seem that, that life is, is the piece that, which is certainly what she values most. Again, <laughs> Uh, enhances some of the ironic tone. <laughs> that, all right, let's, 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 let's stop there. <laughs> we'll come back to that.